You know what he's saying? Wrestling, there's only been a s- small amount of legitimate tough guys. And this guy was more than tough. An Olympic bronze medalist in martial arts. Uh, he he conquered uh, Calgary before he conquered the WWE, WWF. Some wrestle Adam Copeland, Edge, in Beldu, New Brunswick in 1995 in a uh, revival anti Grand Prix where he was champion. Boys, Alan Kogi, he was tough nails, man. Bad News Brown, like most people knew him. Now, he was an American judoka and pro wrestler. He won medals for the States at several international judo competitions, including the heavyweight bronze at the 76th Summer Olympics, becoming the first non-boxing athletics uh, black athlete to win a medal at the Olympics. He later appeared in pro promotions such as Atlantic Grand Prix, uh, World uh, Wrestling Federation, New Japan, and Stampede Wrestling under the names Bad News Brown, Buffalo Allen, and Bad News Allen. Now, Kogi was born in Harlem and raised in St. Albans, Queens, and attended Thomas A. Edison High School. After graduating in 62, he began working in a bakery, eventually becoming a foreman. Now, uh, alma mater was Neon University and uh, was 6'2", 271, all, all muscle. Now, he began training in judo under Jerome Mackey after seeing a poster for Mackey's dojo on the New York City subway at the age of 15. He began his career in 64 at a relatively late age of 22. After seven months as a white belt, he placed first in the Chicago Invitational Tournament. He achieved a black belt in two and a half years, and after five years was named a Sandan. Kogi practiced a classical style, with his favorite throws being the Uchigari and Tai Otoshi. Kogi also studied judo and uh, uh, Tomiki Akito under Kasuto Watanabe and awarded award Shodan in the latter. Now, Kogi won the Amateur Athletic Union judo title heavyweight class in 66, 68, 69, 70, and 75, as well as winning the Open Division in 1970. He also competed in the Pan Am Games or winning gold in the heavyweight class in 67 and 75. <coughs> and 70. He relocated to Japan for two years, where he studied at Nihon University, majoring and minoring in judo. In 72, he suffered a severe knee injury during Olympic trials bout with Jimmy Woolley, rendering him unable to compete in the 72 Summer Olympics in Munich. Upon recovering, he began training for the 76 Summer Games. Kogi was initially excluded from the United States judo team until a class action lawsuit was filed on the United States Olympic Committee by the United States Judo Association. He ultimately won a bronze medal. His victory made him the first African-American to win a solo Olympic Games medal in a sport other than boxing or track and field. When he retired from competitive judo following the 76 Summer Olympics, it was due to frustrations around internal politics. He went on to hold a number of other jobs, including briefly working as a bodyguard for singer Rita Franklin before deciding to train as a pro uh, wrestler. Now, New Japan uh, pro wrestling was the big opening. He was there from 77 to 88 to 1992. He began training as a pro wrestler under Antonio Anoki in New Japan Dojo in 77. He debuted in October 77, briefly performing under his birth name before adopting the ring name Buffalo Allen. He wrestled intermittently for New Japan over the next 15 years. Now, his first tenure in the Worldwide Wrestling Federation, he made a one-off appearance there in February 78, defeating jobber Frank Williams at a live event under his birth name. He returned to the promotion in January 79 and wrestled for the WWF for the remainder of the year, appearing on several episodes of WWF Championship Wrestling. Later in 1979, in Madison Square Garden, teaming with JoJo Andrews, Kogi challenged for the NWA North American Tag Title against Ricky Shoshu and Saijai Sakaguchi. Kogi's team was unsuccessful when Andrews submitted to a Boston Crab by Sakaguchi in a match that lasted just under 10 minutes. Now, in Stampede Wrestling, this is where it became worldwide known across Canada. Bad News Allen found a longtime home in Stu Hart's Stampede Wrestling, centered in Allen's adopted home city of Calgary. He remained with Stampede from 82 until 88, with some tours of Australia and Florida during that time, and had matches with wrestlers such as the Dynamite Kid and Bret Hart. He often referred to himself in interviews as the Ultimate Warrior. <clears throat> now, after Allen returned to the WWF in early 88 as Bad News Brown, 
and it's with during this time that he, that he achieved his greatest notoriety. His trademark characteristic as Bad News Brown was never smiling. Either he kept an angry face or he laughed loud at the expense of opponents' misfortunes. While the roster was mostly filmed with ultra virtuous baby faces and cowardly and monster heels, Bad News was something entirely different, a tough loner and tough as nails for shooters. While other heels were likely to form alliances with another, Bad News was reclusive. His dislike for all fellow wrestlers was clear when he abandoned his teams at Survivor Series of 88 and 89. Some memorable moments from his WWF tenure, including winning the Battle Royal at WrestleMania 4 by last eliminating Bret Hart, who was then heel after a sneak attack. And he followed this with a brief feud with WWF World Heavyweight Champion Macho Man Randy Savage and his uh, manager Miss Elizabeth in late 88 that led to more main event matches. Now, in the March 11, 89 edition of Saturday Night's Main Event 20, Bad News memorably took a microphone towards the enemy's match with Hulk Hogan, and it was told him it was time for the ghetto blaster. And in Zagiri, as he was getting ready to execute it, however, Hogan got out of the way, leading him to miss the move and suffer an eventual loss. Now, the next feud, of course, was the infamous one with Robbie Roddy Piper, who dressed up in both colors, black and white, uh, in tribute to, to the match. Uh... It started at the 1990 Royal Rumble when he was eliminated by Piper, then illegally eliminated him. This led to Brown being ridiculed, which he could, would counter by calling Piper out for wearing a skirt. This culminated at WrestleMania 6 in a match where both men were counted out. Brown was initially planned to continue his feud with Piper, but since neither man would agree to lose to each other, their program was scrapped, and instead Brown was assigned to work with Jake the Snake Roberts, where Bad News used a sewer, actually a possum, Rat against Jake Snake. Around this time, Brown was worked into a story where he attacked WWF President Jack Tunney on the Brother Love show after confronting him about de- being denied title matches. Now, here's where it gets freaky. He eventually left the WWF after SummerSlam 1990, claiming Vince McMahon failed to live up to a promise to make him his company's first black champion, which reportedly affected him and his wife. Now, as written in the autobiography of the Dynamite Kid, Kogi's legitimate toughness was displayed in a confrontation involving Andre the Giant, who allegedly made a racist comment on a tour bus for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Kogi overheard it and made the driver stop the bus, walked off, and demanded the Giant get off and fight him one-on-one. Andre did not move from his seat and later apologized for the remark. Now, from 1990 to 99, he continued to work in independent promotions for several more years, including Japan Shoot Wrestling UWFI promotion. In 94, he worked in South Africa and feuded with former Stampede wrestler, the great Gama Singh. After working for Tokyo Pro Wrestling from 97 to 98 and worked in independent shows in Calgary and Western Calgary, he retired in 99 due to knee damage. He continued occasionally working independent shows for friends while living in Calgary with his wife and had considered starting a promotion himself. Additionally, he taught wrestling with Canadian wrestling coach Leo Jean and worked as a mall security officer in Ardry, Alberta. Now, Kogi was married three times. When his first wife, Audrey, he had his eldest child, Tanya. Then Kogi was in a long-term relationship with Lorraine, in which he had his eldest son, Brian, and April, and two stepchildren, Martin and Rhonda. He had another relationship with Lottie, in which he had two more children, Michael and Nancy. Kogi was then married for a second time to Catherine, in which he had Lynette. During his last marriage until his death, Kogi was married to Helen, in which he had one son, Alan Jr., or AJ, and raised two stepchildren, Don and Francis. At one point, Rick Bogner and Kogi ran a wrestling school out of Calgary. He was working on a book about his career and other wrestling stories before his untimely death. Now, he died of a heart attack in the morning on March 6, 2007, at Rockview General Hospital in Calgary minutes after being rushed there due to chest pain. Three weeks prior to his death, he had undergone hip replacement surgery. His wife, Helen, attended with some of Alan's children and grandchildren at the Bad News Allen Memorial Show. You know, Bad News Allen was uh, was tough like you wouldn't believe, and I'll give an example of how tough he was. He always was trying to get over. I was taking pictures of him and Edge going at it in the Beldoon rink, and the Beldoon arena wasn't good sight lines. And I said to myself, I've missed a, I missed a photo. He kind of whispered, he said, do, do I do it again? He said, bad news, go ahead, brother. I got a beautiful photo. And at the end, with his Atlantic Grand Prix title belt or whatever is representing, got one of the best photos I've ever taken. And the people in the crowd could not believe that he was there. 
You had no idea who Edge was, but when bad news came in, the people basically say, well, I'll never forget that. Some of the crowd said, hey, bad news, what the fuck are you doing here? He said, uh, you're, you're, you're a world champion, man. What the hell are you doing here? And he said, yeah, good question. He, uh, he wasn't that bad that night, that's all I can say. Now, in judo, amateur athletic union, grand champion, 1970. Heavyweight champion, 66, 68, 69, 70, 75. Black belt, Hall of Fame. Olympic Games, bronze medalist, heavyweight. Pan Am gold, 67 and 75. And the pro wrestling side, Canadian Wrestling Hall of Fame, class of 2007. Championship Wrestling from Florida. NWA Florida Bahamian Championship, one time. NWA Florida Heavyweight Championship, one time. NWA Southern Heavyweight Championship, Florida version, one time. International Wrestling Alliance Heavyweight title, once. NWA Hollywood Wrestling. NWA America's Tag Team Champion three times with Leo Brown and Victor Rivera, twice. Polynesian Pacific Championship Wrestling. NWA Polynesian Pacific Heavyweight title, one time. Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Uh, ranked him 187 of the 500 best single wrestlers during the PWI years in 2003. Stampede Wrestling, four-time Stampede North American Champion. West Coast Championship Wrestling, WCCC, uh, WCCW Unified Heavyweight Title one time, and ICW Heavyweight Championship once. Bad News Brown, we miss him an awful lot. And today's modern era, uh, you you look at some of the uh, the tough black wrestlers through the years has been a lot. He was basically a legitimate tough person, but the but the thing is, he only had a limited wrestling uh, occupation. But if he would have put it with the, the martial arts, I think it would really work. But Vince was scared of him because he was a radical. He was a radical wrestler. He was tough as nails. And Vince wanted to appeal to children, and he didn't appeal to children. How he attacked Bret Hart in that famous uh, battle royal has to be seen to be believed. It's on tape. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the, the great story of the great talent, Bad News Brown or Bad News Allen. If you like what they're doing here with our Atlantic Grand Prix Wrestling Podcast, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.